Hello and welcome to Marathon Recon, a mile by mile preview of the 2018 LA Marathon. I'm Martise Moore, the Run Faster Coach, and today I'm running with Tony. Tony is a veteran LA Marathon runner and he's running for the charity Sam Fund. So we're going to find out all about that. So let's get started. All right, so we are doing mile 24. So we just crossed the 23 and we're running to mile 24. So we just come up that last gnarly hill of the race. <laughs> and at this point in the race, Tony, how does it feel? <laughs> Your legs are burning. You have the thought that there's only 2.2 miles left right now. Everything hurts, but you're kind of powering through and just kind of putting your head down and trucking through it at this point. Uh-huh. Okay, so how did you actually, do you remember that this part of the race? I do remember the part of this part of the race. Okay. And I was drinking as much water as I could possibly find at uh -huh. all the eight stations. Okay. Right around, right around here, yeah. Okay. So how glad were you to see this flat part after that hill? <laughs> oh man, it's a godsend. It's a godsend. You go up that hill, uh -huh. and of course everything is burning. And right. you finally get to the flat, and you're like, oh wait, it's just flat and slightly downhill uh -huh. all the way to the end. You're like, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we're getting inching closer and closer to the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you running this again after all that pain and burning you put your legs through? Um, it's fun. It's a it's a healthy habit to uh -huh. have. A lot of people have habits that are not so healthy. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. I used to smoke for years. Okay. And running was what got me to quit smoking. Oh, nice. So I figure I have a very addictive personality. So uh -huh. if there's anything I want to be addicted to, <laughs> running is a good thing to be addicted. Oh, to. Oh, cool. <laughs> And definitely. The longer marathon. the distance, the better. Right, yeah, that's a good thing to take it out on. <laughs> cool, do you do longer than marathons? Uh, yeah, actually, I just ran a 60K last month in February. Wow. Um, it was out in the Black Canyon Black Canyon City uh -huh. out in Arizona, just north of Phoenix. Uh -huh. um, and that was like my first really, really long distance I've ever done. Wow, and how did that turn out? Well, you're still with us. I'm alive, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually amazing. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting the course to be so beautiful, mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting to not hurt so much. Okay. I, I, I hydrated well, I fueled well, uh -huh. and that really gave me an opportunity to enjoy the beauty of the course. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> You're getting a lot of hearts right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so running something like that, does it give you a different perspective on running marathons? Uh, actually, it does. Uh, you're, when you run your first marathon, I ran my first marathon about three or four years ago in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I got past mile 18, I had no idea what it was when your body like shuts down. Mm -hmm. The wall? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had never experienced that before. And my legs went on fire. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't move. Right. I, had to, I tried stretching. Nothing helped. Mm -hmm. And I started drinking water. <laughs> and that started to cure everything. I was like, oh, this is great. I feel okay. much better now. <laughs> Okay, so your your hydration strategy, you have that on point now? Yes. Okay. I have no issues with the hydration anymore. <laughs> okay, and what and fueling as well, because mm -hmm. how long were you out on that ultra course? Seven hours and forty three minutes and wow. forty seconds. Okay, so this is gonna seem short to you. <laughs> yeah, this will just be a walk in the park. <laughs> cool, do you have like a goal for this marathon? Um, the last time I ran it, I ran it in about three hours, 35 minutes, so uh -huh. I'm Ooh, trying to nice. get underneath that. Nice. If I can, yeah. Nice. Well, we're definitely rooting for you. Uh, sounds like you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> I try. I try. How are you training? Um, it's about three to four days a week of running. Uh-huh. Do you train by yourself? Most of the time, yeah. I have a few. Oddly enough, I play trombone, <laughs> so I have a few trombone friends that I run with. Really? <laughs> Believe That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never guess. You never guess. Yeah, I hate this running. Help you play the trombone. You know what? They do actually go hand in hand because running and trombone are just all breathing. Mm -hmm. So I do notice a significant difference in the ability to play trombone uh -huh. cool. because I run. So it helps with my lung capacity, with uh -huh. my airflow, with my air control. Nice. So, yeah. What kind of music do you play? I play everything. I was classically trained on the trombone, uh -huh. and then I moved here and then there's just so much music samba salsa. hey check out his footwear guys <laughs> what's up with those <laughs> I think I've read about those <laughs> yeah they're um 
I, what is it, like two years ago, I was running, I ran on my first 50K, uh -huh. and had this horrible pain in my right foot. Mm -hmm. Didn't know the difference between good pain and bad pain. Mm -hmm. Came to find out that it was a bad pain. Okay. Uh, the nerve in my right foot got damaged from about 20 years of skateboarding. Oh. So what it done is it formed like a fatty deposit around the nerve. Whenever I have my feet in shoes and I tie them off, it cuts the circulation off. Uh -huh. And then it just feels like an ice pick going right through the, oh my right goodness. through my foot. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> so I tried many different things. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that really seemed to work for me was running barefoot. Uh -huh. But I wanted to be able to go long distances right away. So I switched to sandals. So I alternate between the two of them, barefoot and sandals. Okay. And uh, allows my feet to expand as much as they need to and get mm -hmm. the proper, proper circulation. And wow. I don't have that pain anymore. So. Wow. So what are these sandals called? Like they have. A... Uh, these are called Luna sandals. Okay. Yeah, those are the ones I read about yep. in the book Born to Run. That's exactly what I found <laughs> out about them too. Yep. Exactly. Great book. Great book. Cool. So, like. I mean, it's just great. Like, I mean, I never see anybody. Are you planning to run the marathon in those? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I can't run anything else, so it's either this or bare feet. So what if somebody steps on your feet? Um, <laughs> you know. You just deal with it. You just kind of deal with it. I, I have, I've noticed that because of sandals and running mm -hmm. barefoot, I've become hyper aware of my what's going on down here mm -hmm. a lot more so than when I was in shoes. Okay. So, I, I do make sure I know exactly where every single foot placement is. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So do you feel like your feet are maybe stronger? I actually, I do feel that. I feel like everything is stronger. Uh -huh. Honestly, I've never been this fast. Oh wow! Um, I competed. <laughs> Definitely look pretty light. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I feel great with these sandals. It mm -hmm. took me a little bit of adjustment period sure. for sure, but I mean, I've been about a year and three months running in sandals. Mm -hmm. And I would never take it back. Nice. It's, yeah, it's but I'm changed. sure you definitely like yeah weaned yourself onto them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can't just jump into those guys from regular shoes no, and run you, long distances. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> you got to build up the strength in your feet to exactly, and and a little bit of calories. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So not only are you out here running to get a PR, <laughs> but you're also running for the charity Samsung. Can you tell us about that? What they do? The SAM Fund um, is an organization that helps raise money for people, young adults, uh -huh. dealing with the financial repercussions of cancer. Okay. We all know that cancer can take a huge toll on your body mm -hmm. and your mind, right. but on top of that, nobody realizes that life still goes on, so you still have to pay bills. Right. Car payments, rent, you know you have to eat, mm -hmm. those things. So what they do is they help out with people who've gone through chemo. Mm -hmm. And they give them the money that they need to be able to just survive. Right, survive. wow. Yeah, That's so great. I had a friend in college, the Sam Fund actually helped him get through college. Uh huh. And he reached out to me this year. Uh huh. Actually, about two years ago, and that's when I had all my foot injuries, so I couldn't really do anything. But mm -hmm. he reached out to me recently, he's like, Do you want to run the, the LA Marathon for the Sam Fund? And I was like, uh -huh. I would be happy to. Oh, that's so, awesome! I mean, cancer is obviously affected most everybody right. in some sort of their some sort of way in their lives. Sure. Whether it's relatives, if it's their own, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's their animal. My dog lost a leg to cancer oh. seven years ago. Uh -huh. So, anything I can do to help out, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy and grateful to be able to do that. Yeah, you know, that's amazing because that's definitely a big part. Not you only going through such a horrible ordeal to overcome the challenges of cancer but one of them is financial challenges oh yeah oh yeah it can be so much i mean chemo that's good is so to know. yeah that's good to know uh, that there's help out there oh yeah oh yeah okay so we need to help you out are yes. you raising a certain amount of money i am raising a certain amount of money um i hit my goal but oh, that right. does not mean even though yeah I hit my we goal, still want one more <laughs> please please donate i mean you know, cancer cancer isn't stopping. So just because right. I have hit my goal, right, doesn't mean that's where I need to stop as well. Um, right, just like running. Exactly. <laughs> as soon exactly. as you get one PR, you're on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> or the longer ultra race. <laughs> exactly. You get a little taste of that 26 too, and you're like, I wonder if I can go further. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll definitely put your link up with this video. So since you're a veteran of this course, and actually, guys, it's actually starting to get downhill here now. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay. We're in Santa Monica, by the way. <laughs> so it starts to get a little bit cooler here too, which is nice. That nice cool ocean breeze. Yeah. Can you tell us like what in the course in general, like give us some advice on somebody who's like a newbie on what they should do for this marathon to make it through like successfully? I think the, the biggest thing that the biggest mistake that people make is when you know you get right out of the gates and you have all that adrenaline and all right. these people and right. you're like I'm gonna run a marathon and then you run the first three miles right. and you feel like oh my god what am I doing <laughs> so I think that the biggest advice I can offer to anybody is just right. try and pace yourself do the right. first half of the marathon slower than you would normally mm -hmm. And then try and push it a little bit after that. So once you right. hit the 13, uh -huh. that's when you want to start to go faster. The crowd will kind of disperse, so you have room to run a little bit more, and it won't be as crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 my biggest advice. And drink lots of water. Right. Drink lots of water. Once you hit that wall at 18, mm -hmm. the best thing to fix that wall is just hydration. Mm -hmm. Lots of electrolytes, lots of water. Uh -huh. Good. You see, he's all strapped up, so he's definitely gonna make sure he doesn't run out. <laughs> Not gonna run out of water. Not making that mistake twice. Right. Good job. <laughs> uh, so, don't try to keep up with Tony either, because he's like really fast. So, <laughs> so you know, stick, keep stick to your pace, your your strategy for the race. So we are here. We made it wow. to mile 24, and um, I want to thank my special guest Tony for joining us That's and. Awesome sharing his inspiration and motivation because you know after running at uh, ultra this kind of seems easy so maybe that's another training <laughs> training idea you guys can have <laughs> but um anyway if anybody has any questions about mile 24 or any other aspect of the la marathon race please go to greenrunnerla.com and again please support tony we're going to put up his link with this video and until next time keep running everybody 